Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to Career Cushion. Our guest for today is Vadiraj. He is currently working as AMS Verification Engineer at Texas Instruments. Thanks for joining us, Vadiraj. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me here. It's, It's uh, our pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, he is here to share his experiences and thoughts. Let's get started by knowing about him. So can you give us a brief about yourself? yeah so uh, i'm vadiraj kulkarni so currently uh, i'm working in uh, texas instruments in ams verification uh, team so basically i graduated in 2021 only and initially i interned uh, for 6 months in infineon technologies mm-hmm. and then i got full time offer from there and i worked there for uh, till uh, december 2020 and in jan 2023 i joined uh, texas instruments in same ams education uh, team nice nice which college have you graduated from ha ah, okay so i graduated from uh, kl technological university mm-hmm. it's in uh, hubli karnataka okay uh, which electronics branch? department electronics and electronics. communication you see got, it. got yeah. it got nice so can you tell us what is ams verification and what are your roles and responsibilities yeah so uh, ams verification is basically analog and mixed signal verification mm-hmm. so nowadays uh, chips are of either three kinds right like either analog chips or digital or mixed signal where where there is both analog and digital true so yeah, yeah. so if it is digital chip digital part will be verified by digital verification engineers mm-hmm. and analog will be verified by analog designers at block level they will verify mm-hmm. but uh, increasingly now since uh, the chips are becoming more and more complex and it is it is having both analog part and digital part now the, there was a requirement to have a engineer a dedicated engineer to verify how the analog will interact with the digital so so in order to verify the interaction between analog and digital we there is a ams verification engineer this is a okay. top level overview i would like to give yeah okay what ams verification okay got it got it how your day looks like what are uh, your day to day tasks okay so currently i am in the new company so it is more of ramping up is happening for me like mm-hmm. understanding their flows what is the structure or how the test benches are how the how, how, what is the test bench how the how are the test cases i am understanding mm-hmm. but once uh, once our engineer is ramped up he will mm-hmm. be mostly working on a project uh, at different levels like ams verification is not just about uh, verifying something there is lot mm-hmm. actually okay. uh, it all depends on uh, ams verification changes from company to company oh uh, so maybe uh, it all depends on the company what company uh, is doing ams ams verification so basically if there is some uh, mo- a company which produces uh, mobile chips like mm-hmm. you know the names of the company right yes. like Uh, those big companies they uh, their the chips will be more of a digital so whatever chips that we have in the mobile or laptop or those are very very digital chips mm. they will also have analog but it will be very in a very small pub for power related it will be there mm-hmm. but uh, if we come to some automotive chips uh, automotive chips then the analog thing will be more like mm-hmm. when as automotive mm-hmm. or industrial or some it, it all depends on the application that the company is catering to so based on that application where the chip will go the work of the ams verification engineer will change okay so if the chip has more of a digital content like if mm. the chip has more digital and less analog then uh, the work of ams ams verification engineer will be similar to digital verification engineer but it will be little bit different mm-hmm. but if it if it is a more of analog it will be very much similar to designer like how designer verifies in the same way he might he or she might verify uh, but uh, if it is a pure mixed signal uh, like you can uh, like there are many mixed signal companies so those companies uh, there it will be it it some products will be very much into analog some products will be very much into digital 
so mm-hmm. the flows and all will change drastically uh, many places but the philosophy remains same like at the end of the day, someone will be writing test cases and verifying the chip okay. but uh, how they write a test case what uh, how they will uh, ver- try to verify some functionality it all depends on the chip and where the chip will be used mm-hmm. who is using the chip it all depends on the customer who is using the chip and all so it's not like uh, if if we take two ms verification engineers from one company to another company mm. they might be not doing uh, same kind of work they might be doing one might be fully into digital some mm-hmm. might be into analog it's like that yeah okay. and uh, there are many things in ms actually. yeah so uh, in infineon and ti uh, your profile is same or uh, it is ms verification only yeah. but the chips we get are are different uh-huh. uh, some chips uh, are like i i was doing uh, behavioral modeling mm-hmm. in uh, infineon mostly mm-hmm. and uh, also mixed signal verification mixed signal and ams are both are same only like mm-hmm. we use sometimes we sometimes we call it as msv mixed signal verification or analog mixed signal verification okay so so i was doing msv and also behavioral modeling so it's a evolving field i would say mm-hmm. uh, so it is not a new it is not a old field it's a very okay. very new field maybe okay. 10 years back it started ams verification oh. and it was not no one no one knew that it is ams verification mm-hmm. like uh, initially digital verification uh, or analog people started let's say some part came in the chip as digital mm-hmm. so they said let's verify this also mm-hmm. analog designer only verified it similar digital people also verified some uh Uh, some uh, analog part in their chips so similarly when the both the th- both the uh, things grew uh, over the period of time then they thought we should have a dedicated engineer for that mm-hmm. so it's a very very new field it's still uh, evolving uh, like right now the scope if you see right the scope of work for ams verification it mm-hmm. it ho- mainly depends on what chip we are working on what what who is the customer and what company we are we are there got currently it, got it. yeah so you are telling about behavior modeling right what is it actually yeah. and how is it different from ams uh it's uh, see behavioral modeling is just a part of ams verification mm mm-hmm. okay okay so we model the behavior of any block or something mm-hmm. and then this uh then this behavioral model will be used by Uh, either digital verification engineers or it will be used by analog verification engineers analog ams verification engineers mm-hmm. in order to speed up the simulation okay okay right because if we use analog as the analog and digital if we just uh, analog we call it as a spice right mm-hmm. so if we use a spice netlist and the rtl uh, it will take lot of time to run the simulation mm-hmm. if 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 uh, if only rtl and the verilog model is there then it will run faster in order to speed up the simulation and all we use the models okay so instead of the actual schematic thing hmm. we use the models so that the okay. simulation speed can be faster so that we can find the bugs early and uh, it need not it not uh, delay the uh, tape out or not delay the product coming into the market so this is what uh, is done for this is what a use of the behavior models basically understood understood yeah so yeah. what skills do you found vital for this career and what are the tools and languages you use uh so again skills wise right it all depends on the company you are mm-hmm. going to okay because uh if the company uh, you are interviewing is uh, of uh, which makes chips for mobiles computers mm-hmm. um uh, which is not analog mm-hmm. okay which mm-hmm. is which you know that uh, its its major uh, strength is not analog mm-hmm. then you prepare for system verilog uh uvm and uh, verilog uh, mm-hmm. is necessary this much like whatever you prepare for dv same mm-hmm. thing you can prepare for ams no need no need of any extra effort for ams verification mm, got it uh if if the company is of uh, which is more digital side which mm-hmm. works mostly on digital chips mm-hmm. 
the company is working mainly on, mainly on analog side uh, like pi analog devices or yeah. any other uh, companies mm-hmm. so there uh, you should focus on system very log mm-hmm. very log and some analog concepts okay is yes, enough okay? okay and if if the company is like mix signal like uh, infinian is a mix signal company mm-hmm. uh nxp is a mix signal company so so these companies uh focuses on both but it, it all depends on very very specific role uh, but mainly they will since they will ask basics if you if you are strong at one side on the other side you can pick up easily no problem got it okay okay um so um how have you prepared for your interview for both infinian and ti like as a fresher in infinian and as an experienced in ti and can you share few tips for students uh, okay uh at infinian yeah so at infinian um uh, actually i was not doing anything about ms verification like mm-hmm. i did not know anything about verification at only because i was into uh, design like in college we used to do design mm-hmm. i was not one knowing the very lot actually so they asked me about design only whatever i have done in the college so they uh, they asked me about very lot but i was able to do only basic things in very lot mm-hmm. uh, but uh, based on that because everyone in our college was like that only maybe some people might have known because mm-hmm. uh, uh, like we were not aware of the ams okay. verification okay mm-hmm. so it was very new that time now people now it is very popular uh, in the linkedin and on many job openings i also see it. but uh, i was not knowing anything about that i just pre- went with the basic engine whatever is there in the engineering mm-hmm. and coming to ti it was mainly what i have done in infinia it was okay Mo- mostly focus on the project you have done yes yes yeah Got it. Got it. And later, I I learned system analog and all. Once I joined company, before I was not knowing it. Okay. So, have you used any free resources that are available to learn SV and UVM? Ah, uh, EDI Playground I used, but I don't know whether it is available for free or not because I used my company ID and I worked on it. Got so, it. I'm not sure whether it's available freely. Maybe there there might be some tools which might mm-hmm. be available. Yeah. uh do you have any suggestions for free resources resources from which people can learn sv very long uh, qvm okay. so i i learned from youtube only mm-hmm. uh, okay. i have not i didn't enroll for any courses or something mm-hmm. and uh, youtube there is one channel like dowls dowls uh, i don't know what is that full form but okay. some dowls channel is there okay. uh, they are they have some website also Okay. Okay. Uh, there, it's it's free in YouTube. It's free, right? So it's good. It it's enough. Like whatever they teach is very very good quality content, and uh, you can follow synopsis, cadence YouTube channels also. They they also they provide some. I really like the classes uh, videos from class about system error lock class video mm-hmm. from uh, some uh, one synopsis or cadence. Some someone had made it. those are very good quality videos they 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 know what they are teaching got it got it yeah hmm. that was really great like from youtube yeah. you have learned and then yeah like in my company also they they provide the courses uh, okay. like yeah so from there also i have learned uh, but as such uh, i felt that youtube is more free hmm. only we can as learn as a fresher lot. to enter yeah. the industry the resources this is enough the videos yeah. and and i would suggest uh, if you don't learn uvm it's okay mm-hmm. like no okay. one will last that much if you are mm-hmm. a fresher right okay uh, learn very log system mm-hmm. very log basics you will learn okay mm-hmm. and uh, i would say learn python okay okay python and perl are very important every, every one thing is constant that uh, python you will be working on some or the other automation Mm-hmm. so you need to know python or perl okay. either you will be reusing some automation or you will be developing a new automation mm-hmm. so understanding of perl and python is very much ne- needed and uh, you should be aware you should know the basic linux commands mm-hmm. that is very much needed because i know it's 
in colleges people might not be uh, doing that uh, yeah linux they might not be using linux that much but please uh, it's just a basic cd command cp mm-hmm. rf that much is mm-hmm. <laughs> enough okay. if they know that much if we, if the see if they spend some 10 minute video on youtube that's mm-hmm. enough yeah. got it so uh, in your day to day tasks do you use python along with sv verilog as well ha huh. uh, python is very much essential because uh, see water whatever automation see we cannot do everything in everything manual right yes there are many tasks that uh, keep on repeating so we need to automate it so all those automaton automations are in either in python or or perl okay and if some changes need to be done in the automation you need to know what is written there yes yes so uh, if we don't understand then it is very difficult so mm-hmm. it's not that you need to know python lot okay because yeah. it's not a college or school right where we you need to give a exam daily yeah, no yeah. it's not like that you can do a simple google search and uh, you can you can implement a function whatever is needed hmm. so uh, but in order to know what to search you should know little bit of python True. if you don't know what is function then uh, you cannot do anything if you don't know what is uh, what is a variable like it's not possible to do anything right so just learn the basics of python basics of perl and uh, if any advanced thing you need require as a project or in your work then you, that anyways always you can do the google search yes yes so basically knowledge of any scripting language would be helpful mm. yes, yes uh so um do you have any suggestions for tier 2 and tier 3 college students to get into semiconductor industry yeah so if possible like first good like i would say uh, best way is to uh, do an mtech from good college mm-hmm. okay iit mm-hmm. or ias like that kind of college mm-hmm. and where you know that placements happen okay yeah or uh, if that is not possible uh, due to any reason then you can take any courses uh, mm-hmm. or if possible like you can get courses online can yeah. do, you can do some research on that yes. who is providing better course or some some if you ask some of your seniors they might help you also uh, and before taking courses make sure that it's genuine and th- you have some data behind it and uh, yeah and uh, i would say if, if this is also not possible um, then masters is also there masters is also an option but uh, masters it takes uh, it, it's i would say easier way masters in, in usa i'm i'm talking yeah. about usa yeah. or germany anything yeah. but only thing is the final uh, money like is the only constraint there yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. but uh, second option is good but if provided if you are enrolled in a good course and the, the the it's a genuine thing yeah. and yeah. one more thing is that you can join some service company but i don't know like uh, i i am not very much aware of what thing what happens in service companies like mm. so that's also one good option yeah got it the only concern i see is the bond i think bond will be there in service companies mm-hmm. yeah. what will be the average salary for an ams verification engineer and what will be the role hierarchy in this field it's same as other uh, tech uh, sorry other uh, fields in vlsi mm-hmm. uh, like there is no i think this nothing i didn't observe any change, difference mm-hmm. uh, for example if db is db and ams they might be getting almost same amount only i guess uh it is in a product company it will above 10 lp ara easily mm-hmm, okay. mm-hmm. and uh, service company again standard whatever other price are offering so yeah. it it will be uh, more than 10 if you if you are into some product companies yeah got it got it okay. and how will be the career progression and role hierarchy uh you mean like uh means 
like how uh, what is that like so i didn't get you yeah. joined as ams verification engineer then mm. you'll become what will yeah, be yeah it's just uh, okay if you want to stay in ams verification only then it will be like senior staff mm-hmm. principal mm-hmm. Okay, okay you might someone might go to fellow also like it's like that or mm-hmm. if you want to change fields some you can change fields but mm-hmm. since it is a very new domain right like yeah. uh, just less, less than 10 years i would say mm-hmm. uh, so i have not have not seen um, fellows and all okay. of ams verification hmm. they might be there i have not seen okay okay so okay. yeah there might be some some progress like uh, system marketing they might become one mm-hmm. day mm-hmm. yeah it's a, it, it, ams verification is a dom is a is for is for people like who don't know what to do let's say if they if they want to enter vlsi mm. and they don't know whether they want to go into design or analog digital or yeah. verification or mm. test so if you come to ams verification you will you will be seeing all those people okay okay you will get the flavors big, of every other yeah like you you will be interacting ams verification is the only domain right who will be interacting with many people like mm-hmm. you will be interacting with designers uh, who is uh, and test engineers you will be design uh, interacting with digital verification engineers you will be interacting with uh, digital designers analog designers so you will be interacting with everyone mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. so from there you can see their work how they are doing if you if it's something interest you can go there so yeah. it's a that kind of domain like if you just you can if you don't know what to do just enter ams and then mm-hmm. you can explore like whatever interest you can go there or you can stay here also okay you will get the stuff every other uh... it's not that you will be doing that work you mm-hmm. can see what they are doing yes 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 you will understand what is happening actually yes yes in other domains hmm. how can someone uh, enter into this field or interested to enter this field find opportunities in ams verification so yes um linkedin mm mm-hmm. so if someone is experienced then uh, there are lot of openings i see now mm-hmm. uh, in ams verification right from service companies to product companies everyone is hiring mm-hmm. uh if then you can you can you need not uh, think that you should have a exp- if you should have experience in ams verification only to enter ams verification Hmm. If you have experience in any of the domain in AMS verification, you can yeah, any of the domain in VLSI, you can enter. You can do AMS verification. Got it. Uh, hmm. Since it is a very new field, right? So it need not uh, be that uh, you need to be an expert. Then only you can enter. No, it's not like that. Hmm. And uh, even if you are fresher, you need not be afraid of anything. Hmm. Like you can whatever may be the role. Hmm. Uh, one thing is one thing I have learned is like in VLSI, right? whatever may be the role if you just give 6 months to it you will get mm. it got it got it you will understand it and you, will, you can you can get an decent level of understanding whatever is happening and mm-hmm. you can do task independently just 6 months okay. so uh, i would say don't no need not afraid that much like what will happen and all just basics if you prepare system very long mm. very long and some scripts like python or perl it's mm-hmm. that's more than enough got it so uh, can non ece graduates enter this field or uh maybe electrical people can enter but i am mm-hmm. not sure i have not seen any computer science or other people entering this yeah got it. electrical might come mm-hmm. maybe telecom people yeah mm-hmm. some some electronics, electronics background well, yeah yeah need it yeah. uh, maybe some exceptions will always be there some outliers yeah. will be there but uh, majority will be enc or electrical people yeah got it got it uh, do you have any suggestions for the uh, interested buddies yeah uh, yeah that only like don't need not uh, worry uh, uh, like understand what you need like if you want if if your intention is just to enter vlsi then mm-hmm. whatever opportunity comes in your way you can go Mm-hmm. If you are interested in design, then find the opportunity which, which, which is which, which is of design. Mm-hmm. If so, if you are interested in verification, then find out about in verification. So, be clear with with what you what is your interest. So, if you are not interested just for 
package if you come or just to enter vlsi and later you don't know what to do uh, then don't do that have a backup plan have a clear idea what you want to do then only jump in otherwise wait for some time mm-hmm. uh, think about it if you want to do masters or whatever and then you can decide yeah. got it got it's it. not hurry like it's, it's not that after btech you should compulsorily get a job like mm-hmm. take time <laughs> i would say uh, it's not uh, late if if it's always almost 3 years or 4 years after your btech yeah. true true yeah so i have one last question so what hmm. is the most challenging thing you find being an ams verification engineer uh okay uh challenging is that uh we should we should fi- the ver- the main role of verification engineer is to find the bugs yes so we should find the bugs like uh, till the uh, last date of milestone right we should be finding some or the other bugs so we should never be satisfied that yeah it's done and uh, we are like there is no bugs you can do like that some kind of thing will also always be there that yeah we might have missed something like we should, i should have given i should have done some more test i should have that thing uh, always stays in a mm. verification engineer like mm. uh, maybe i have i have verified much more like little bit more little bit more yeah so verification never ends okay like it will be like there is lot of things that we can verify but mm. due to time and all we will re- we will limit ourselves like we will okay. not verify a lot of things so mm-hmm. so that thing is there always be there that yeah we should we should verify still more still more still more that uh, we'll be always thinking like what else we can verify in the chain what else we can verify so that constant uh, thing will always be there in the verification engineer like what we can verify a little bit more yeah got it thanks mm-hmm. that uh, this was a great information session yeah thanks for joining us Yeah thank you thank you